Konnichiwa, Watashi wa Nick Palmashano. Konesa, the Bad News Network, Imasu. We're going to start with the most important story of the week. 1,400 people have been killed by an earthquake that both initiated a tsunami and set off a volcano. This tragedy in Indonesia is of biblical proportions, and we're barely hearing a thing about it because we're incredibly self-absorbed. Homeboy in Indonesia is like, I had a real bad day. And we're all like, same. Oh, what happened to you? Well, we have the Supreme Court nominee and He's like a total dick, and it's possible that like when he was in high school and college, he got drunk a lot and like groped people. My whole world is falling apart. How about you, my Indonesian friend? Well, I got hit by an earthquake, a volcano, and a tsunami in the same fucking day. It kind of sucked. Sure, but this Kavanaugh guy, he's like a real dick. An earthquake, a volcano, and a tsunami. 1,400 people dead, 2 million people affected and we are not even talking about it. It is a byline underneath 4,000 stories about whether or not some dude was an a-hole in high school. Anyway, let's just jump right into the shit show. There's been a bloodbath on both sides over the last week as people have worked hard to dismantle both the stories of Ford and Kavanaugh. People have been coming out of the woodwork to let us know that these two people are not who they claim to be. It's it's absolutely insane. So where do we start? We're gonna decide with a little coin toss. Okay, looks like heads. We're gonna go with Kavanaugh. A boat full of Kavanaugh's classmates from Yale came out to say the dude was a bit of a lush. He partied like it was 1999. And it actually makes sense because this was in the 80s. And police reports show that he actually was also in a crappy bar fight where he threw ice at a guy that he thought was the lead singer of UB40. Let he who hasn't been in a bar fight over a low-key alt reggae band from the 80s and early 90s cast the first stone. But there's more! A letter that Kavanaugh wrote in high school highlighted what he was planning to do during a beach week trip with his friends. Nothing crazy or out of the ordinary for teenagers, but it made it pretty clear that Kavanaugh was both a drinker and a bit of a horn dog, if I'm being honest. He admitted to writing the letter, so the veracity of it is not even in question. Additionally, some of his classmates have verified that he was part of what was called the 100 Keg Club. This was kind of like a shitty American Pie style pledge where instead of trying to hook up with girls, they pledged to drink 100 kegs in a school year. As a total aside, I feel like rich kid high school is way more fun than regular kid high school. And the last morsel on Kavanaugh, his friend Mike Judge wrote a book about his exploits in high school and his addiction with alcohol called Wasted. In that book, there is a character that is essentially the two I see of him getting drunk all the time, a character called Bart O. Kavanaugh, probably a totally different dude. Now, none of this means that Kavanaugh sexually assaulted anyone. What it does mean is that he didn't just like beer, he made love to it which means he was bullshitting the Senate, which is probably not a good idea. Here's how he should have handled it. Judge Kavanaugh, did you drink beer in high school? Yeah, I drank beer in high school. I drank more beer than any man deserves to drink in an entire lifetime. If I wasn't playing football or lifting, I was basically in an alcoholic haze. Georgetown prep! Did you ever partake in any binge drinking? I was part of the 100 Keg Club. That means that me and five other bros drank 100 kegs in one year. There's 165 beers per keg times 100 kegs, that's 16,500 beers. Divided by six, that's 2,750 beers each. 365 days a year, that's an average of 7.5 beers a day. But you know what? Judge and I were fire and Sully couldn't hold his shit. So it was really more like nine beers each for me and Judge. Don't act like you're not impressed. Georgetown Prep! Did you have a blackout? A little. 1984 and 85 were a bit of a blur, but everything started coming into focus right around May of 86, because I remember Top Gun coming out. Georgetown Prep! People would have accepted the fact that he drank a lot as a dumb kid. What they are having a harder time accepting is that because he was an athlete and a successful student, that he couldn't have also drank alcohol. Ask anyone that served in Germany in the late 90s, early 2000s. We do seven mile runs at 6 a.m. where the entire formation was basically at the same bar together doing shots two hours earlier. We put the high in high functioning. It can be done. And now the Ford drama. An ex-boyfriend of Ford came in and just 
dropped some dimes. In no particular order, Dr. Ford has, in fact, trained someone on how to beat an FBI polygraph test. If this is true, this means that she perjured herself on the stand and points more towards the idea that her testimony could be fabricated with the express purpose of hurting Kavanaugh. Two, Ford dated her ex for a long time and never mentioned either A, Kavanaugh, or B, being sexually assaulted. And three, Ford had no fear of flying and in fact has flown many times, including on small propeller planes, and had a great time doing it. This leads to the idea that perhaps her not being able to fly over to DC was nothing but a ruse to strategically drop this at the least opportune time for Kavanaugh. Man, this thing is ugly. So ugly, in fact, that Lindsey Graham actually yelled at a protester, why don't we just drop him in water to see if he floats? We're pretty sure he stole that from our BNN last week. Watch yourself, Graham. This thing is so ugly that it reminds me of a Mexican soap opera if it was between Feinstein and Graham. <laughs> Anyway, the Senate votes today and we're going to find out if this thing is moving forward to confirmation or not. I kind of hate everyone involved right now. So enough about that spectacle of a fight, let's talk about another stupid fight. Kathy Griffin and Tommy Lauren had a Twitter battle this week. Highlights include Griffin calling Lauren KKK Barbie and Lauren attacking Griffin for a deluge of profanity. All in all, this was a good reminder that while we fancy ourselves to be enlightened beings, we're really just fancy monkeys flinging poo into the abyss. In President Trump news, the New York Times launched an article with scintillating evidence that Trump actually inherited $413 million from his father, Fred Trump, as opposed to his founder story that uh, he only inherited about a million dollars and it was a loan that he had to pay back. The real hotness is that he did this while circumventing tax laws and possibly even committing fraud. Gosh. I'm old enough to remember when the only scandal surrounding our president involved paying off porn stars, playboy models, and his entire staff being involved in secret meetings with the Russians or tax evasion. The times have changed. And other politicians are garbage news. Democratic staffer Jackson Costco, who reminds me both in appearance and the sound of his name of Emperor Cusco from The Emperor's New Groove, got arrested this week for doxing Republican senators. He also threatened to release information publicly about the health of these Republican senators' children. When asked how he felt now that he was in prison, a distraught Costco said, LAMA FACE! Breaking news. The Senate has just voted to advance Brett Kavanaugh's nomination to the final vote. This portends well for Kavanaugh's final vote, and we go now live to Kavanaugh's celebration, where he is vowed to turn over a new leaf and be the kind of justice that America can be proud of. We're going streaky! Yeah. No, I'm sorry. And finally, let's end on a happy note. Scientists have spotted the first exomoon, or moon outside of our solar system, in history. The moon is roughly the size of Uranus. That's not even a joke. That's just how big it is. But still, this is good positive stuff. We cut now to NASA. That's no moon. It's a space station. You know what? Good. And with that, I'm Nick Palmashano and this is the Bad News Network. Our news is at least as bad as the news you're getting already and we probably don't deserve to live on this planet.